Good afternoon and welcome to another Money Making Mom Scope. We're going to be talking about 11 ideas for blog post or any other um, social media post for those days when your brain is just completely fried and frazzled and you want to write something but you are just, you feel like your creativity is run dry. We're going to talk about that today. So welcome, my name is Crystal Payne, for those of you who are new, and I am the founder of MoneySavingMom.com. Um, I am have been blogging for 11 years, almost, and I've blogged almost every single day for 11 years. Um, so I definitely know what it's like to always be coming up with new content and to need creative, creative ideas, to um, not run out and um, not rent, let that well run dry. And so if you have days where you feel like, my brain is just fried and frazzled, and I don't know what I should be posting about, but I wanna post something, I'm gonna share with you 11 ideas. So welcome and so glad to have you all here. So we're gonna go through these pretty quickly, and these could be for a blog post, or these could be for any kind of social media, um, for especially for like Facebook. So number one, ask a question. You can ask your readers and your audience a question. And I will tell you that readers love to feel like they have a voice. They love to feel like they are part of a community and that what they have to say matters. So ask them. Maybe it's a problem that you're having in your life. Um, maybe it's, you know, you're trying to decide between should you buy this or should you buy this? Or should you do this or should you do this? Or you're struggling with maybe in your parenting or mothering, whatever your blog is about, whatever your brand is about, think about questions that you could pitch to your audience. Or maybe it's not even that, maybe it's more so like a survey type of question that you ask your readers. Um, I've done polls on, you know, what, what do you keep your thermostat at in your house? Or, um, you know, would you buy this? I posted a little funny thing on Instagram earlier that the, they were bacon bandages and kind of putting it out there to be like, would you buy bacon bandages? Um, people love to be part of a community. So uh, what if they never engage? Well, keep trying. Keep trying. Um, if you ask an interesting enough question, usually people are going to engage and keep wanting their input. You can also do those quick polls. You can create a free poll and sometimes people are more apt to, you know, click a poll button than they are to actually leave a comment. So that could be something, especially if you're um, first getting started out. So number one, ask a question. Number two, share a quick tip. Maybe you don't have time to do a full post or you don't have inspiration to do a full post, but you could just share a really quick tip. Maybe that is, you know, you're going about your day and you remember, oh, maybe your blog's about mothering and you're like, um, I have this really quick tip for how I get my kids to, I don't know, whatever it is, you know, how I got my kids potty trained or how I get my kids to drink enough water or whatever it is, sharing that quick tip. Or if you blog about entrepreneurialism that you could be like a quick tip on how you're increasing your Facebook um, traffic or how you're increasing engagement. Something that it's just maybe it's a site that you recently um, found to be very helpful. Maybe it's a book that you have loved recently. Just share a quick tip. Number three, comment on an article or a quote from a book. You can share someone else's great article and you can link to it either on your Facebook page or on your blog and then just comment with your thoughts on it. That's a really simple way to create content without having to reinvent the whole wheel or um, write a whole big long post. Maybe you just don't feel like you have that energy to write that whole big long post, but you could share someone else's post and you could you know, do two or three sentences of comment on it and open up the floor for discussion. So I also love to share quotes. Um, you know, if you watch my scopes in the morning where I do a book club, um, book club scopes where I'm just basically sharing content from someone else that I found helpful. 
and people love it. People love my book club scopes and it's very easy for me to do those. I can also turn those into, um, I can share some of those quotes on a blog post or on my Facebook page. It's super simple. I'm sharing something that I found beneficial, but I'm not writing it myself. Number four, tell a story. Did something funny or interesting happen to you? Tell a story. On Instagram, I love to do, I love to throw out interesting tidbits. Like um, when I went with my friend Mackenzie in Washington State this weekend, we were getting manis and petties, and um, the lady asked if it was a mother-daughter outing. And it was just a funny story because I'm like, I'm 34 and she's 31. And um, so I shared that on Instagram and, and people love it when you share an interesting tidbit or a funny story. Five, write about a product that you love. Maybe you're going throughout your day and you realize, you know what, I just adore this certain kind of kitchen product or I adore this certain kind of outdoor product or this cleaning product, write about that. Um, I was just thinking, you know, one thing that I love is, um, I've talked about this before, but we have um, those Aqua Notes. They're um, waterproof note, a waterproof notepad that you can put in your shower. And you can actually write on it for all those ideas that come to you when you're in the shower. That's a product that I love. I can write a post on how much I love it. I've never done that, but I should do that sometime. So write about something you love. Share a picture post. I've been doing this a lot more recently where I will just share a picture and write a little bit about it. It's kind of like mini blogging and it's kind of what I do a lot on Facebook or on Instagram, but it works well on your blog as well. So sharing a picture, I will share sometimes my Instagram pictures and just, you know, a few sentences. People love that. They love to see a little peek into your life. Yes, Keely, it's called Aqua Notes. You can get it on Amazon and we love it. We use it for love notes. Um, my husband and I write love notes on it. So that's right up your alley, Keely. Um, but they're super cool, cool even if you don't use them for love notes. Um, using them to write down all your ideas and your blog post ideas in the shower. It's great. Number seven, answer a comment or an email from a reader as a post. A lot of the time when someone will leave a comment or ask a question in a comment or an email, I'll start to write back and it will get kind of long and I'll realize, you know what, this is actually a post. I shouldn't do this as a reply in the comment section. I should write a full post on this. So save those when someone writes an email or you see a comment somewhere, someone leaves a comment that you think, I'd like to write a post on that. Save those somewhere, um, either in a post draft or on your Google Calendar, however you um, keep things organized so that you can remember that later when you need that idea for a post because you're fresh out of ideas. Also, Kill two birds with one stone. If you're gonna answer someone's email and it's something that would be helpful to a broad audience, go ahead and turn it into a blog post. Now, do be careful. Don't share details that someone has shared in the email that wouldn't be appropriate to put out there on the internet, but do um, consider if there's a way that you could make their question or their comment more vague that you're not putting out there. If they send it in as an email, you don't wanna just be putting all their details out on the internet. But sometimes I will change their name and I'll change some details around the situation so that um, I'm not putting details out there that um, I haven't been given permission to share. Or sometimes I'll write back and I'll say, hey, this would make a great blog post. Could I share your question on my blog with my audience? So I'll ask them permission if I'm gonna just, if I wanna share it verbatim. Number eight, request help and input. Are you trying to decide which paint color to use, which dress to wear, which craft project to try, or book to read next? Put it out there and ask people to give you input. I always find this so interesting and very helpful. So um, one thing that I have done, I remember before we were going to South Africa, I wanted to bring four books on the plane and I could not figure out which ones to bring. And so I posted my whole stack of books and I had a lot of them and said, which books should I bring on the plane? People love to give input on that stuff and that really helped shape which ones I chose because I thought, you know what? If this many people are saying I have to read that book, then I'm gonna pay attention. 
Number nine, write a book review, or you could also do a podcast review or a movie review, a review of something, some type of um, something that you've read or watched or listened to that has been beneficial to you, or you haven't liked it all and you want to put it out there that you didn't like it. Number 10, share 10 links that you love. People like posts that are like 10, my 10 favorite whatever, my top 10 books on such and such, my top 10 favorite kitchen tools. Or if you can't come up with 10, you can do five. People love the top, like top and then a number post. People love that. You can even do my top three. So sharing um, either if it's links or products or whatever, but that's an easy way to come up with a post without having to write a lot of content. And those always do really, really well for me. And there's kind of like, you could come up with dozens and dozens and dozens of ideas for that. You know, if you write about books, you could do so many different top 10 lists. If you write about mothering, you could do so many different top 10 lists and people eat that stuff up. And number 11, give something away. Readers love giveaways. I found they especially love giveaways if they are something that I'm actually giving away. So sometimes I will, if I'm going through my house and I'll come up with, you know, I have an extra book this morning on my scope. If you saw, I did, I had extra copies of Breaking Busy that I accidentally ordered. I, they sent me one for free because I'm a blogger and then I accident, I ordered extras. I think I didn't realize that I'd ordered extras and so I have a stack of them. And so I gave it away on my scope this morning. People love that. It's just kind of a little fun extra thing that you can do and it's a great way to be able to come up with content. So um, those are just some ideas. You know, if you feel like you wake up and you're like, I really wanna blog something but I can't come up with anything. Those are some things that have helped me. So I'd love to hear from you. What do you do on those days when you want to write something, you want to post something, but you just don't have any ideas and you just feel like my brain is fried. What helps you? What, you know, what do you do when that happens? Because we all have it. I think for me having a queue of post ideas, like I talked about earlier, um, I think it was like three scopes ago, having that queue of post ideas really helps me so that on days when I'm like, I need to post something, um, having a lot of ideas in the hopper, some of them that are almost ready to go, is a lot easier. Do I ask permission before you link, before I link to others? I, you do not need to ask permission before you link to anyone, as long as they're it's a public blog, a public website, you don't need to ask permission. However, if you're going to share content from their post, so if you're going to um, share a paragraph or two from their post and then link over to their post, that's totally fine. But if you're gonna share their whole entire post, you definitely need permission and usually people aren't gonna really want you to give uh, aren't going to really want to give permission for that because it's their post that they wrote for their blog and technically for you to post it on your blog is not really a good thing for them on Google because Google will see it as that you are like both of your sites are copying each other's content and then it, they will ding you is kind of what it's called um, and it's their property so they own the copyright to it so you can always use a paragraph or two as long as you make it very clear that it's from someone else's blog and you're linking over to their blog always okay. If you have any um, any question about it though, you can always ask. But anytime you're linking to someone's site, you don't need to ask permission. You haven't had a day like that yet? Well, I think that, um, Kaylee, you are like this machine of ideas. Your brain just, I don't know how Kiwi does it, but her brain is amazing. I want like to be able to capture some of that and stick it in my brain too. Um, she just She's a powerhouse of ideas. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad that that's, that that's helpful because um, a lot of new bloggers are like, they don't know if there's a certain kind of etiquette or um, whatever. You don't play with duplicate content at all. You just um, leak it. No, your posts are not Google's property, but you know how when you go on Google and you'll type in searching for something. Well, what comes up um, first is based on all these algorithms and 
You just basically, if you have duplicate content on your site, then Google doesn't like that and will say, you know what, we're not going to show your post as high up in when someone searches because there's duplicate content. Um, I'm so glad that it's helpful for you, Julie. You're just getting ready to start blogging and this is great. I'm so glad. So for those of you who are thinking of starting a blog, you're just getting ready to start blogging, be sure to go to um, moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope. I have a how to make money blogging series there, but it's more so it's not just about how to make money blogging. I tell you how I make money blogging, but it's also step by step how to set your blog up for success. And I think it's really, really important that you get a very strong foundation in place. Um, my husband always says, how tall is a pyramid? And a pyramid is as tall as its base is wide. And so when you have that strong, solid base and foundation in place, it's going to set you up for success. So I walk you through how to set up that strong foundation so that you can set up a successful blog. And I think it's really important that from the get-go, if you can, to really be intentional. My favorite blog platform, by far, hands down, is WordPress. I started on Blogger, and then um, when I started Money Saving Mom, because I um, we update it so often, Money Saving Mom uh, Blogger thought that Money Saving Mom was a spam site, and so they locked me out of my blog because you own no property on Blogger, you're just able to use it. And they locked me out of my blog for nine days. I could not get on. The only thing I could do was update my sidebar. I couldn't update any of the content. So I decided it was time to move somewhere that I wasn't on free property. <laughs> so I moved to TypePad, and this was like 2008, I think it would have been. I moved to TypePad, and that was great until my blog grew to a point where I felt like TypePad, it wasn't showing up my header and some of the sidebar. We tried a lot of different things and it just felt like TypePad wasn't designed for blogs that get a lot of traffic and a lot of spikes in traffic. So then we moved to WordPress, which by then we had thousands of comments and hundreds of posts that had to be moved over. Um, we hired a company from another country and they moved everything over for us because it was so much to move over and I have stayed with WordPress and I highly recommend WordPress. If you go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope, there's the link to how to make money blogging. It kind of talks about what you need to do to set up your blog and it walks you through step by step how to do that and gives you some resources to get started with that. So if you're wondering like how do you get started and what would be kind of my top recommendations, it's all there. Is it difficult to move an established blog on wordpress.com to wordpress.org? Um, People do it often, so if you are not very techy, I would recommend considering hiring someone to help you with the move because it can be a very hair pulling out experience if you're not techy. Um, that was the best. It cost me $800 to do, and it was because I hired somebody from another country. Probably if I'd hired somebody here because my blog had so many comments and so many posts to move over at that point. Um, probably would have cost a lot more, but because I hired, I don't even remember what country it was from, and I don't think the people, they could speak English very well, but they did a good job of making the move. That was a long time ago, but, but anyway, so you can do it, and um, there are lots of tutorials out there on how to do it, um, and if you're a DIY person who is kind of techy, you could figure it out, but I will just tell you it is, for a lot of people I know, it's been like pulling their hair out to figure out. Um, I say to use now let me see if I'm gonna get this right. Um, dot org dot com I believe is the free site where you cannot put advertisements up. Dot org is where you have to buy your own hosting, and then you can have all of the advertisements and you can run it like a business. Um, I am I think that's right. Is that right? You guys tell me. Um, so yeah, if you start with WordPress, with your own domain and your own hosting, it's gonna cost you about $10 a year to buy the domain, um, which is, your domain is your URL. So that's like moneysavingmom.com. It's like the house that you have, um, your address, your property, and then you have to also pay for your land that you rent your house on. So you put your, your domain is your URL, your www address, 
and then you have to buy hosting which is like that they um that you can put your address on and that's what basically um host your site um, you can go through Blogger, you can go through other sites, you can go through WordPress.com and it's free, but you don't have the ownership like you do on WordPress.org and on WordPress.com. You cannot, when it's free, you can't put advertisements and stuff. So it's really important that if you want to run it like a business, if you want to make money off of it, that you do it on WordPress.org. But you're going to have to buy your domain your and your hosting, which hosting is about, you can get it for about $3.95 a month. Um, so if you go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope, I walk you through um, how what I recommend and how to get that set up and some other resources to help you out if you're wondering, what is this all about? How does this work? What is this? Yeah, your domain is your house and the land address is your hosting site. It's a little bit confusing, but um, that's how it is. And so you just have to, you have to play by the rules. Um, otherwise you have a problem. So, um, it's like you, you can't have an address without something to put that, that address on. So you got hosting from, for iPage. Is that for my page for $1.99 a month? Um, one thing I will say, you can get hosting for cheaper, but one thing I will, will tell you is that if your site grows, you want to make sure that you get some kind of hosting that will grow with your site. Um, I've learned this very much the hard way. You also want to try to get hosting that um, can, if your site all of a sudden, let's say, like sometimes when I will link to a site and it will send like thousands of new readers to the site. Every once in a while I'll have a post on Facebook that'll do really, really well and I will be linking to someone else's site. Well, if you have hosting that's super cheap, it can't, um, it will just crash, your site will just be crashed. There, no one will be able to get to it because it wasn't set up to be able to have all of those people come at once. So with some of the little bit more expensive hosting or hosting that has the option for you to go a little bit more expensive if your site grows, they're able to help you in those situations where some of the really cheap ones, it's just like there's no number to call, nobody's um, the support tickets, nobody's answering those, and so it can put you in a pickle if you have some kind of cool opportunity happen where someone links to you and you get a bunch of traffic. So that's one thing to think about, but always stick with whatever budget you have and work with what you have and don't grow your expenses ahead of your income. So that's, um, I really think you have to be careful. You don't want to, you don't need to go out and spend 30 to $50 a month on hosting when you first start out. You can get it for three or four or $5 a month and it, it's very decent hosting that you can grow with it. So um, does WordPress offer you hosting choices? That's a good question. I, I don't know. I've always done the hosting separately. Does anyone know? Um, do I type my post directly into WordPress? I do. Um, I, when I write a blog post, I do sometimes, um, I've talked about how I'll handwrite things out or, um, sometimes I'll email stuff to myself, just ideas. But when I actually write a post, I do it in WordPress in their post editor. I know a lot of people use a lot of other fancy things, but that's what I've always done just because I can put the links right in there. I can put the pictures right in there and I'm just used to it. And that's what I've always done. So that's what I do. I also have it set up. We have some cool things set up where, um, like if you click certain buttons, it will do some kind of cool things, um, that it's all kind of pre-programmed in. So it's easier for me to do that. Do I have a good YouTube channel that you can refer to if I'm starting from scratch? One of my favorite um, sites for starting from scratch, and maybe some other people can share if you have some other suggestions, but bloggingwithamy.com. And her name is Amy Lynn Andrews. She has um, excellent, excellent step-by-step -step tutorials for setting everything up. And she has a lot of YouTube videos. So if you've ever wondered how do you install this, how do you do that, she's really good at walking you through step-by-step -step with setting things up. And for someone like me who is not techie at all, it's really, really helpful if I have that step-by-step by step set up. Bloggingwithamy.com. Um, she also... Her, her site is, is she cha I think it's amylynnandrews.com, but bloggingwithamy.com should also go um, there. And I love her weekly email newsletter. She calls it the newsletter. So be sure to sign up for that because she has so many great 
um, links and tips and little tidbits in there. She's this geeky sort of person. She used to work for me. Um, she was my very first virtual assistant, um, but she's this very geeky sort of person but also super smart and um, has so much wisdom and she shares it in a way that even I can understand it. So that's saying a lot. So anyway, um, yes, Michael Hyatt gives a lot of information on starting a blog, especially if you want to blog professionally. He's a really good resource as well. So um, thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, I wanted to mention that if you haven't done so already, if you go to moneymakingmombook.com, moneymakingmombook.com, you can sign up for my free five-day course on how I make a full-time income from home. So if you're wondering, how does she do this blogging thing? How did she get started? How does it work? Does she really make a full-time income? What does that look like? And has she made some really stupid mistakes? Go to money, moneymakingmombook.com and you can sign up for that free five-day course and we'll answer all those questions. So anyway, have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you tomorrow morning around 8 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time for our morning motivation show. Have a great day.